Hey, welcome to the One Piece of the Time Distilling Institute with your host, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest, Alan Bishop. Hey, this channel is all about home distilling and legal distilling. If you've got questions, reach out to us in the comments below, social media, or via bishopshomegrown at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out thealchemistcabinet.com. So this is an interesting email that I got uh, at uh, bishopshomegrown at gmail.com from Jim Pierce, who emailed me a couple times. He was actually... He's actually in the contest for, uh, you know, the recipes I asked you guys to submit a while back. And uh, we will get around to announcing those winners here shortly. As I said, some of those recipes I can't do until I have the ingredients. So there may be more than one winner, in all honesty, once we get around to announcing that. Um, nonetheless, so Jim is very interested in three-chamber distillation. And uh, I'm going to read his email here. I'm going to try to answer his questions, and then I'll make a few comments on three-chambers. Bear in mind that I am not a three-chamber expert um, I do have a very small three chamber uh, that I am working on uh, and trying to get it operational for a, a another distillery. Um, and I've done a lot of research on three chambers uh, alongside talking to several friends who've done research on three chambers and or run three chambers. So I'm going to do my best here. For those of you who are not familiar with three chamber stills, uh, I would go check out Todd Leopold of Leopold Brothers. He has a three chamber rye out there. It is a very heavy bodied, very oily, very uh, lavender like um, distillate. It's super heavy, very different from any of the rise out there. Uh, so we're going to jump into this real quick here. So uh, Jim says, I am fascinated by rye and I'm working towards building a three chamber still. The main body will be four stainless steel 60 liter milk cans. They will be hooked in a series with tri clamp fitting and will have copper tubing in each chamber to blast the wash with steam from the previous chamber. The top chamber will have a simple worm that runs through it for a heat exchange. The thumper will be another 60 liter milk can. The condenser will be a large copper worm, thinking three quarters of an inch. The worm will be made to fit in 10 inch PVC pipe. The condenser will to fit in a 10 inch PVC pipe, sorry. The condenser will be tall since this whole setup will be about 10 feet tall I think perhaps six feet tall. The hot condenser water will feed a 40 gallon barrel, which will feed the boiler. The boiler will be another milk can, but not sure on the size. I'm thinking a 30 or 50 liter can instead of a 60 liter for a boiler. What do you think? To power the boiler, I'm planning on 4,500 or 40, yeah, 4,500 watt heating element. I do not intend to run a traditional wash through it though. I got interested in Koji as well. My plan is to grow koji and use it on five different grains. It'll be grown on rice, and then each grain will be fermented on the different grains using kavai yeast. Grains are rye, corn, red wheat, and oats. The fifth is the rice that will make the koji resulting, whis resulting whiskey. An additional factor would be I really like the idea of three yeast to slightly change results by doing ferment of each yeast on each of the grains. I do not know if I can pull that off, though. Aging, unfortunately, will be my downfall as I want to use chestnut and will only be able to do sticks at best, laugh out loud. I have a couple of questions. One, how does the setup of the still sound? Two, any idea on the size of milk can for boiler? Three, what are your thoughts on running these washers through a three chamber? Four, how crazy of an idea is this? Most people I know make brandy, sugar, shot, or corn liquor. The rest are consumers instead of makers. Basically, anyone I've talked to about this develops a glazed over eye look and just nod their heads, hoping this email makes sense and would value your opinion. This is exactly why this channel exists, is for um, ideas like this. Ideas that might seem crazy to everybody else. <clears throat> a couple of thoughts, and, and uh, you'll have to excuse my voice getting a little weak here. But um, So first of all, uh, it sounds completely practical to me as far as like how you'd build that three chamber. It sounds like a lot of work, sounds like a good amount of expense. But if it's something you are dedicated to, this is not something you can just order from a still builder. There's nobody really building them out there except for Vendome, if you want to spend several million dollars, and a couple of other smaller private fabricators that are going to cost a substantial sum of money for a very large still. For practicality reasons, what I would say is make sure that each of your chambers is at least 12 to 20 gallons. That is a small three chamber, right? And they don't always have to be three chambers. Sometimes they're more than that. Sometimes they're only two chamber. Okay. In order to drive the steam to that, I am not an engineer and, and I couldn't even, here's what I'll tell you. I have, I've had a steamer still, a 50 gallon steamer pot still. 
I could run it through the hearts using a 15 gallon keg with a steel head on it attached to drive steam into that steamer still. I could run through most of the hearts with a 15 gallon keg, but I could never get into the tails. I suspect that if I had a 50 gallon pot to steam it with, I could have gotten there. I don't even know what to begin to tell you on a three chamber. I know you're going to be playing with valves a lot, both on the chamber and on the steam side, right? That's just going to be part of it. Um, and you're going to have to play around with it and see what works and what doesn't work. I would almost suggest if you're going to spend this kind of time and money doing something like this, and to be honest, I'm not sure this is a home project that you really, there's a, if you want to pursue it at home, go for it because I want to see you do it. I want to see what happens because I think it'd be awesome. I would, I would, I would say probably buying a steam generator from like Home Depot would be a better option. That's just my thoughts as far as practicality goes. If you're going to spend that kind of money, honestly, my next observation is I wouldn't put a thumper on this. That's not the way three chambers were traditionally set up. Um, I have talked about, you know, the one I was playing with at home, uh, before trying to set up for the Southern distillery, I was originally going to do a thumper on it. I talked myself down, and the reason for that is I learned more about three chambers uh, in the time since then. And the way three chambers were traditionally pretty much always run in Pennsylvania and southern Indiana is the three chamber operated as a beer still or a stripping still. Now, late in the game with the three chamber, they started to add doublers, which are self-heated, right? So you're running everything off of the three chamber. It's coming over to a condenser, dropping that as, into a liquid from the condenser into a heated doubler where it's flash distilling again. Problem with that is you can't really make great cuts. You can do returns, several little tricks you can do on an industrial scale, but you can't make great cuts. If I were going to go through the time and effort and trouble to do something this involved, I would make the three chamber. It would be my stripping still. And then I would take everything that resulted from that three chamber and run it through a pot still, which is the original way that the three chamber distillation uh, was set up in Pennsylvania. Um, but that's that's just me. That's just on my end. Uh, your fermentation idea is interesting, doing each of the grains individually using koji, etc. right? That's kind of cool just to see what they do. Um, I don't know how all of those grains would react in a three chamber, obviously. Uh, so far, my experience with three chamber has been limited to what Todd has done, uh, some apple brandy and some peach brandy off of another small home distillers, three chamber. I don't know how those other distillates would do. What I would say is the three chamber was designed specifically to run mash, not wash, but mash. You want that grain in contact with that steam, just hammering it as hard as it can for as long as it can to extract all those heavy oils, drop those in that bottom chamber, and then that infuses everything into the chamber above and the chamber above, right? That's where you're getting that heavy body distillate that was so famous for Pennsylvania rye whiskey and so famous for blended whiskey back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So I would do grain in on everything that you do here. And the same thing if you do fruits, right? Mash in the entirety of the fruit. Cut it up good, you know, applesauce, whatever. You know what I mean? But leave them solids in there and put those through that three chamber because that's the entire point of a three chamber. Uh, where else we at here? So I answered the first two. Uh, what are my thoughts on running these washes through a three chamber? I kind of answered that. Uh, for how crazy of an idea is this? Listen, man, I stay awake at night thinking of goofy shit that I don't have money or time or energy to mess with. And then I try to mess with it anyways. So you're never going to hear me say that that's a crazy idea as far as something if I think that it can be done. I do think this can be done. I would be interested in seeing a home distiller do this. What I would say is do your research. Find as much literature on three chambers as you can. Find as many diagrams on three chambers if you can, as you can. Go out to Leopold Brothers if you get a chance and talk to Todd. Look at what he has, etc. Right? There's no, this is not, uh, I think I can make a steam still tomorrow. This is take some months and some time and really think this through heavily to play with it and see what you can do if you're going to do it. I suspect you're going to spend a lot of money. I suspect that there's going to be multiple failures, but that's part of home distilling. And if you come up with something cool, then you can tell other people exactly how to do it and share it with the community. So that's what I got, guys. I know that was long-winded. 
I know it might have been awkward in spots. I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And we'll be back with you shortly with some actual process videos as opposed to talking fathead videos. So, love you guys.